I'm here with Sabina on the Siemens booth. Sabina, yesterday at the press conference, you mentioned that the way we know grids is fundamentally changing. What's the role software has to play in this? First of all, I agree. I mean, the grids are changing. There's so much PV, so much renewable energy is coming in at the grid edges. And um, that, that really changes how we operate grids and all the business models that you can build now on PV or on, um, on EV charging and, and so forth. And most of these new businesses, new business models and uh, monetizing um, energy on the energy markets is driven by software. So if you think of a virtual power plant, yep. microgrids and uh, these things, they're all driven by software. Then it's not also about the hardware, you need to connect things, but then how do you operate those models is really in the software. Plane. And the other point you made yesterday, which, which was extremely valid, was yet the grid operators need to do what they do. They need to see what's going on. They need to balance. And, so you can't do one or the other. Absolutely. I mean, with all what I just described happening at the grid edge, so more PV, more um, battery storage, more uh, e-cars, um, that makes the grid extremely unstable and makes it much harder to operate. And now the grid operator has a much more complex task. And our role at Siemens for decades has been to make the life of a grid operator easier. Now software plays an even bigger role there, from simulation to planning the grids to uh, then the grid operation. You can think of it like uh, driving a car. Right. You have assistants these days, like what to drive a car in the distance, and uh, you get recommendations of what to do. Yeah. You do the same for uh, grid operators, just real-time assistance for grid operators to keep our grid stable. Now, one of the points you made at the press conference yesterday, which was kind of a, ah, you mentioned that traditionally the grid operators would kind of synchronize the data they had in the grid to do grid simulations yeah. around once a quarter to see what was going on. Sometimes even once a year. Once a year. Yeah. With all of the, the technology out of the grid edge everywhere, the software, you're now able to do that every 15 minutes. Absolutely. Um, that is the digital twin at work in the end. So the digital twin is exchanging the same data model of the grid between um, the control room yep. and the simulation department. So we send control room data every 15 minutes to our simulation engine. We simulate the stability and the, the status of the grid in a, um, uh, in a timely manner in 15 minutes. And then we get back not only with the information what is happening in the grid, but also with recommendations of what to do in contingency situations. And, and if I the grid operator sitting in the control room, I'm getting more data, I can I understand what's going on. I'm in control. Yes. And yet out of the grid edge, if I'm building a new business model, I can start simulating what if and Absolutely. all sorts of business Absolutely. models. And you can enable those business models much faster because in the end you need to get clearance from the grid operator right. to build a power plant, a virtual power plant. And if the grid operator can process that much faster, because you have the simulation done faster. Yeah, and, and every 50 minutes yeah. is about wait next year when we do the next one, right? Yeah, and, and the end, we're accelerating the energy transition, right? Hey, good stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you.